Before we get to Marvel, I want to get into the independent or other labels that are not the main two, DC and Marvel. Now, starting off with this, we'll look at, it's a Hasbro comic book featuring one of my childhood favorite toys, Micronauts, and a toy I never had but read all of the original issues in Marvel, which is ROM. I'm really hoping that this will bring the toys back somehow. <clears throat> anyway, I got it in both flavors. There's two different covers. Um, it's probably the same one. It's cover A and cover B. IDW does a lot of that. It's very annoying. But anyway, for 25 cents each, why not? I get both of them. All right. Um, now, Rise from Heaven. Uh, or Fire from Heaven, not Rise from Heaven. Fire from Heaven, East Sigma. I'm pretty sure I don't have this one. I want to get that entire series so I can read through it. Captain Power. Who remembers the toys? They were based on a TV gimmick where you shot at the TV with the lights. And, uh, it, you know, kind of like Duck Hunt where the toys were lights and stuff. I had the figures. My little brother had one of the ships. All right. Stargate. Um, okay. I'm not speaking in tongues. I'm just trying to read the, the cover. Uh, Dynamite number one. Oh, whew, it was English. I was like, uh, wait a minute. Did I pick up something I don't know how to read? Anyway, I, I'm a big, huge uh, Stargate fan. I've been re uh, actually been watching on Amazon Prime some of the old Stargate Atlantis shows. <clears throat> Mighty Crusaders. I, I loved Mighty Crusaders. It was uh, my childhood that uh, it was almost like, hey, this is back in the good old days, I bet. You know, uh, it's like a, a retro. It was like back then it was like the retro, maybe the 50s stuff. And I don't even know to the day, honestly, if the Mighty Crusaders, I, I think it was. I think it was Archie's. 1950s comic or maybe something I don't know but this is definitely not 50s it's just I always thought it was like their retro version kind of like the Defenders of the Earth was all the old way back in the 30s stuff like you know uh, Flash Gordon and um, the Phantom those comics uh, that were you know comic strips that became one comic book series and one well actually one te television cartoon series well Mighty Crusaders was kind of like a like the Justice League sort of like the Avengers sort of uh, some no-name heroes that are just together. Um, remember the Eraser was one of them, the Web. Um, you know, kind of like, he was like, kind of like a Batman, the Fly. I don't remember her name. <clears throat> so I mean, they had like a little thing on the front. All right, we got our Superman, Captain America crossover. It was, you know, I think maybe she was Nightshade. I, I don't remember. It was really, it was just interesting at that time. It was like, ooh, retro stuff. Kind of like the kids like into uh, Minecraft now or anything else that's retro. All right, uh, I was surprised to see this here because this isn't this a new series, Transformers Bumblebee. And that's the old logo, but, you know, I'm... Yeah, this is a good time to find out because it's like, I no, 2010, wow. I thought this was based on the uh, movie. There was a movie series that just came out, and I was like, wow, it, it, this just came out. Nope, this is 2010. Interesting. Armada, uh, a series I never got into on TV, but um, hey, I'm thinking the comic book might be good. Sometimes the comic books are great when the TV series are nothing like them. Like the original Transformers cartoons, I loved them as a kid. The comic books were completely different. I mean, you know, you thought, oh, no, they should be the same. No, the origins were different. Uh, everything was different in the comics. It was very confusing if you tried to watch both or did, you know, the cartoon and the comics. I preferred the comic book back then, actually. We didn't have VCRs when I was a little kid, so, you know... I just read comic books. That's, that was my VCR. Uh, and you can always replay it anytime you want to. That was a great thing about it. Um, Transformers G.I. Joe. Um, I had the original Marvel series of this, so I'm kind of interested to see what IDW does to it. Or actually, this is DW. Whoa, okay. So it was DW and it became IDW. Dreamware. I don't know. I guess they're related. Seems like they should be. All right, Star Trek, not a big Deep Space Nine fan, but, uh, you know, especially, it got better after Worf got on them, let me put it that way. Malibu Sun was probably the pre-Worf era. Uh, Wildcats Adventures, if I already had this one, I deliberately got this one because I know that when you have the word adventures in your titles, it usually is trying to reflect the cartoon, and there was definitely a cartoon on back, um, back then because I watched it, loved it, and this is probably safe if I do have doubles of these, fine. They'll definitely go to the school. All right, uh, number three of that as well. Ultraman, I grew up watching Ultraman actually as a kid. That would be that swirling, gross thing at the beginning would unwind and become Ultraman. It's almost like they had a mixer turned on and they had like Ultraman spelled out in some kind of batter. They were mixing and then they ran their tape backwards. Anyway, I definitely watched Ultraman as a kid. We'd watch it every day. Um, 
I just don't know. I mean, I was like, at number one, though. That's good. That's a good sign. Nemesis. I don't know much about anything about if their comic book series is related to this or later series. All right. E-Man. Now, this is an interesting comic I was uh, talking about. I'll get to the comic books that I grew up with. I grew up with the E-Man comics before first comics came out with their, I don't know, reprints or whatever. E-Man was hilarious. He was a superhero that had, I don't know, he can basically change his body around. Kind of like Plastic Man, remind me of, but he can completely change it, like, to glass or whatever he needs to. So he was a molecular, whatever, element man is what E-Man stands for, technically. All right, this is uh, Nova, his girlfriend, who he gave powers to her because he had to save her from something one time. All right, so they had to alone against the F-Men. It's like their version of the X-Men. It was, they're so funny. Let me see if it has a cover. Well, there's the, um, Nova becomes the, uh, the Phoenix of their universe. I remember it being a puddle or something, a squirm squisher. I remember Zit Clops, because that was funny as a kid. So, I mean, if they show up in this one, let me just show you, because you got to watch. You got to really, <laughs> there's a Wolverine. You probably won't get a chance to see this kind of, like, I was surprised to see it myself, because I was just thinking about it the other day. Actually, this is really rare. About a week or so ago, I was thinking about, this is one comic book I'd like to have, The Albatross. That's what she was called. So, Nova became The Albatross. Um, I was thinking, I would love to have this one again, but, you know, X-Men, it's probably not going to be something that's easy to come by. Wow, I was I wrong? And this is the particular one I was thinking about, because I love um, X-Men and parodies. So, this is like the Phoenix Saga, where she becomes insane. Huh. It doesn't really... Where's the... Uh, maybe it's in the very beginning. There's definitely a splash page that introduces all of the F-Men. Uh, he's either a number one. There's a Kitty Pride, by the way. <clears throat> Maybe it shows up in number three. Maybe I got number one under here somewhere. I got a bunch of E-Man. And I guess the F-Men is like, you know, E-Man, F-Men. Dark Albatross must be removed. Oh, yeah, see, that's the Dark Albatross, like the Dark Phoenix. Oh, oh, here we go. Here's the Splash Major, I remember. The F-Men. We have uh, Zip Zit Pops. Okay, that's how it's called, Zip Clops. Zip Pops. He has uh, acne that's, um, he has to keep a shield on to keep it in check. Drizzle, you know, she's basically uh, controls the weather, but not too well. Makes a lot of slush. Claude Hoppus. Well, we know who that's supposed to be, but I'm not quite remembering him as well. Uh, the Weasel, is no Wolverine. And Squirm Squisher? Yeah, here it is. Or, or slime Squisher. Squirmer. Man, I've botched these up, but hey, it's been a long time. Airhead. Okay, so Kitty. Oh, ooh, all right. Yeah, I guess I overlooked those things. I didn't know what that was when I was a kid. I grew up in a good time where you have to worry about that stuff. All right, so that was number three. I also had number four, which it's not going to be in all of them. Like in this one, they're not in this comic. Uh, number seven. Number six. I got two number sixes. That's fine. Uh, number ten. All right, and then we get back to the IDW More Than Me CI Transformers. And I think I have this one already from the other store. Um... But it's the More Than Me CI. This is where it gets confusing. There was two series at the same time, and then even they changed names. Like, I think one of them became Combiner Wars. I was like, I thought I had it straightened out, and when I went there last night, I was sitting in the store, I was like, I'm so confused. I bought 46 comic books, and I don't know what the reading order is. They don't have, like, years and dates on the front of them, which would help me out a lot. So, More Than Me CI, number six. More Than Me CI, number seven. Number five of the same series. Now here's what they changed. There's two different titles. There's Robots in Disguise. Uh, not the kitty cartoon. This one's the... Uh, you know, you can tell it's definitely not the little children's cartoon. Um, I th they ran simultaneously. This is what's confusing. Like This was probably... They split up from, I think, the original Transformers. Uh, May 2012. And this one was... Uh, May 2012. So these were simultaneously. They were both number fives. They were not the same thing, though. You can tell. Here's the first page of this one. Here's the first page of this one. So at some point they split up and I'm going to have to figure it out at some point. All right, so anyway, with Robots in Disguise, we have number five. Uh, number five with a different cover. That's cool. Uh, for 25 cents, I don't mind having an extra cover. All right, we got Transformers versus the G.I. Joe. And then, I don't know anything about this comic, but the art looks really cool. Uh, and I'm not talking about how they draw women, of course, back in the 90s. Uh, way too much hit there, seriously. Um... It just looks pretty cool. I don't know. Legacy number three. 
And then I, I love how, I remember when they did this, um, it was 1963 comics, they were trying to make it look like back in the original Marvel era of, uh, you know, the Fantastic Four and all the, all the, the explosion of the Marvel comics. They're trying to do their retro take on it. So it was the Image 1963 line. And it was Nobody Escapes the Fury. And it's almost like Spider-Man mixed with, I don't know. It's, I thought these were cool. And it's a Vood Dude. Void Doid. Void Doid? I don't know. Void Doid looks like the Incredible Hulk, sort of. Anyway, that's cool. I, I, I did it. I used to collect these and I thought they were really fun to read. Um, there's a few other ones, but hey. But comment below. Wow, already went past 10 minutes. I didn't have a nearly as big of a pile. Comment below. Tell me which ones you think are the best um, and which ones I should probably start with. So definitely going to sort out the Transformers. That's going to be the most confusing things. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. See you in the next one.